to do. Your foundation is strong. You build up on the rock and the storms are coming.
Bible said it was his word that was a lamp to our feet and it is a guide to our path. I need the word to lead me. I need the word to guide me. I need the word to take me and show me the way it is that I'm supposed to go. Oh my Lord, when, the, when Jesus spoke the word to the Pharisees because the Pharisees had the problem with Jesus saying Jesus your disciples don't wash their hands when they break bread or they're, they're, they're disobeying the commandment of the Lord but really in actuality there was no commandment of the Lord to wash before they break bread the washing was for the sacraments of the tabernacle the washing was for the priest at the water of labor the washing was for those that gave the sacrifice it had a spiritual reason it had a spiritual purpose but they reared up traditions that caused the word and the command of God to be of no effect can I warn my away church if we're not careful we'll conjure stuff up in our mind we'll connect the dots so much that we'll make traditions that will make the word of God of not effect can I tell you I'm thankful now I know don't get me wrong I'm thankful for certain traditions I'm thankful for traditions that help us abide by the word of God I'm thankful for traditions that help us keep us spotted from the world I'm thankful for those traditions but there are some traditions if we're not careful they'll cripple the word of God they'll quench the spirit of God some might call up on your tire well hello somebody we got to get to the place where we're willing to let the Lord have his way regardless of the tradition regardless of this regardless of that will I might as well bring it home when the spirit of God's moving and you want to shut it down because now's the time to take up the offering now's the time for the announcements now's the time for the over call I wish they would do this and do that baby you better get rid of some of those traditions and let God have his way be led by the spirit be led God's not impressed by our little routines God's not impressed by our little infatuations God's looking for somebody to worship him in spirit and in truth you gotta be led by the Holy Ghost quench not quench not the spirit of the Almighty God Well, right here now, this struck me. Master, don't you know your words offended the Pharisees? And all Jesus could reply was, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall Be rooted up. Yes. Every plant. Yes, sir. That I'll preach for two hours. I could preach about our the commandment of the Lord and our traditions being planted. And I could preach preach about some of us being planted. Yes, thank you, uh, but every plant that is not planted of the Lord yes. shall be rooted up. That's why you couldn't pay me a million dollars to be a tear in a field of wheat. Because the Lord never planted the tares the Lord planted the wheat how do you know when the Lord watching now how do you know when the Lord plants something and when something else is planted by somebody else the wheat brings forth grain and when it brings forth that grain it causes it to bend over it, has, it don't just exist to exist it exists to produce something it exists to do something to produce something to bring something else to pass in other words that wheat exists that somebody can take the grain of that wheat take it to the meal and take that meal and mix it up and make a loaf of bread out of that grain you can't do that with the tear there's substance to wheat there's some usefulness to wheat God can take the wheat and do something with it my God I would be scared first lady if I was planted in a place and I wasn't producing nothing and I wasn't useful for nothing and God couldn't use me for nothing 
I'd be scared because I want God to plant me. And when God plants me, He will water. He will give the increase. And He will produce something out of me that will go beyond me. He will produce something out of me that will go beyond me. Don't you know they were offended? Fact of the matter is, boys, if my father planted them, then I can't uproot them with my offensive words. I want to God we can take an inventory of ourselves. Never good saying to God that's ever been to this building and call this place home and call that man pastor and first lady. And they found the reasons to go. And, well, let that be as it may. I, I do like this to the what Jesus said. You know what he said to those people that get uprooted? Leave them alone. Yes, sir. That's what he said. He said, let them alone. Let the blind uh, lead the blind. They'll both end up falling in the ditch. They don't need your help. Well, hello, somebody. I don't care if they do leave the church. That's not use for you to talk about them. There's no use for you to put them down. There's no use for you to bring up the telephone and tell what they did here or, or where they went or what they're doing now. I'm not interested. You gotta leave the tears behind and you worry about the things. Worry about the people that God did plant, that God did so. Because chances are they would have never been uprooted if the Lord had a I said you can't get uprooted when the Lord plants you because when the Lord plants you he places you right in the place where he needs you to be and when the Lord plants you you begin to take up root in the place where you got planted you and your roots begin to grow down and when your roots grow down you begin to grow up I call on my attire some of us we need to get enough root that it doesn't matter who lies on us who talks about us I'm sorry I'm rooted in Jesus I'm planted in the house of God that's where God planted me they can lie they can look at me funny but I'm sorry he planted me and I'm going to stay right where God placed me to be Get uprooted when the Lord planted him. It ought to be our prayer tonight. When we have an auto call in a few minutes, every one of us precious people ought to come to this altar and say, God, you plant me. You plant me. Hallelujah. You. Take up the root. And when you take root, those roots grab a hold of that soil. They get a grip on that dirt. And when the wind blows, they might bend. But they don't break. When you take up root, you might not get the water that you need. But those roots, when you don't get water, when you don't get water, those roots will just go deeper and say, if I can't get water from above, I'm going to get water from underneath. When God plants you and the storms rage, you let a beat on you all you want. When the sun rises in the morning, I'm still going to be planted. I'm still going to be where God placed me. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. I'm still going to be right where God called me to be. Because what God planted shall not be uprooted. I worry about folk. That's one situation away from leaving the house of God. I worry about people. Not because you leave this house. I worry about your relationship with Jesus. Not 
your ties to daddy short or Anna short. Not, not even your ties to me. I'm worried about your relationship with God. Because, uh, because when your relationship with God is strong, you get a revelation of what this house means to you. And you get a revelation of what that word means to you. And not let the of God. Someone say, well, Brother Austin, you're just making a sales pitch to keep people here. No. Is the truth here or is it not? Is the truth of his word of the death, burial, and resurrection here or is it not? Is the truth of holiness and separation from the world here or is it not? Is the truth that you must be born again of the water and of the spirit here or is it not? I must stand here because my favorite preacher's here. I'm standing here because my God meets me right here three times a week and I need his word to get into my heart that I might not sin against him. Lest any of us be like the parable of the four types of ground all received the same seed. The problem wasn't in the seed. The problem watching now wasn't in the sower. The problem was in the ground. The problem is not in the seed. The problem's not in the sower. The problem's in the ground. If you don't take up root, it wasn't the seed's fault. And it wasn't. If I, take a, if I don't take a fruit, it's a chance that it was stony ground. If I don't take up root, it's chance that the devil come and took away the seed that I received. If I don't take up root, it chances are the heat of the sun, the heat of the trials and tribulations come and cause me to wither away. But if I'll take up root, if I'll make sure that my kolabayo tolabasaya, that's why Pastor mentioned before service prayer and how he's so proud to see more people gathering around this altar. You need to hear me. You know what you're doing when you're praying. You're tearing up the fountain ground. You make sure your chore, that stony heart isn't going to be what receives the word. You are making sure that the things that went on today ain't going to be distracting you from the word that you're just going to receive. I got somebody. You every time you come to this house, you want to come prepared with your fellow ground turn. Hey, the sower, don't tear up the ground. It's up to you. What kind of ground you're I worry about people's relationships. I worry about people's roots when we fall out with one another over the silliest of things. We're one disagreement away from writing each other off. You don't love God. Because you see how I love God by how I love my brother. Because if I cannot love my brother who I have seen, how can I love God? But I have not seen. You love your brother like you love yourself. You love your brother because you realize, hey, if I've been baptized in his name, felt the Holy Ghost, you've been baptized in his name, felt the Holy Ghost, and we're doing our best to live for God. You're my brother. You're my sister. We might not be twins, but you're still my brother. You're still my sister. Hello, somebody. Well, 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 I think they ought to be like this. I think they ought to be like that. You better be careful that your traditions. Well, hello, somebody. You know what? What, what scary people pick churches nowadays based on their tradition. That's right. And not on the seed. Not on the commandment of the Lord. But the commandment of tradition. I wonder. Now I say this as nice as I possibly can. Not throwing stones at nobody. 
I wonder how many families are stuck in a rut of false doctrine just because old grandma went here. I believe the Trinity blessed God because my grandma believed in it. My mama was a Baptist and I'm a Baptist. I ain't gonna be nothing else. And you know what? There is such a thing as loving your family more than you love God. And hey, love your family. But love God more. If I can't love you and disagree with you, then I don't love you. Uh, hello, somebody. And if what it takes for us to agree, for us to love, then let's call it puppy love. Because that puppy grows up. And puppy don't do what a big dog does. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Everybody wants the puppy. Uh -huh. Nobody wants the dog. Yeah. Ain't that right, Mike? Oh. Hello, somebody. <laughs> Don't pay her no mind. She knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. Everybody wants the baby. They don't want the grown up. Uh -huh. Everybody wants all, all this stuff that they want to create their little fantasy world out of their tradition. But the fact of the matter is, I'm not here after tradition. I'm here after the sea. Yes. And watch, watch it. You know what some of us are doing? We're just living to die. That's right. Yeah. Not looking to do anything with our life. Not looking to do anything. Oh, I, oh, I felt that. Well, you're a young man, Brother Austin. That's all I hear when I hear that stuff. I want God to find usefulness out of me. Not because of my youth, but because he put a breath in my body. Amen. Hallelujah. I want, I want, maybe it's just me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay on this long enough until all of us get a burden. I want part of me to get so much under the load that when I'm not under the load anymore, people will be able to tell it. And somebody else will get under the load and say, you know what? It's my turn to carry the load. It's my turn to carry the torch. It's my turn. It's my turn to get what God wants me to be. That God can use me the way he wants to use me. Help me, Lord, to bear fruit. For ye shall know a tree by the fruit it bears. Not how big it is. Not how pretty it is. Are you looking for the fruit? Are you According to the word of God, your tree is of no use if its leaves are green. But the fruit is barren. Why? Because the fruit goes beyond me. You know what scares me? Spiritual hitchhikers. What are you saying, Brother Austin? That all they want is a free ride. Oh, God. Here we go. Some of us have let our little government give us the mindset of, ah, just let somebody else do it. Let somebody else go to work. Let somebody else pay the bills. Let somebody else earn the check. Just as long as I get what I'm supposed to get. Let me make it on somebody else's prayers. Let somebody else fast a meal for me. Tell everybody else to pray for us. And we don't pray ourselves. want a free ride. Spiritual hobos. Don't want to do nothing. We just want to get what we can get. Go back. It's in the same gospel. Some folk just hung around Jesus for the fish. Amen. 
and the bread sticks. Looking for a handout. Give me, give me, give me, give me. No, that's not what the kingdom's about. Answer me a question. What would happen to this church if your pastor had that mindset? What would have happened to this church if first lady had that mindset? Well, but right here it is. Well, Brother Austin, they're the pastor and pastor's wife. They're supposed to do no, 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 no. I don't understand. They're a Holy Ghost field. They're baptized in his name. And yeah, they might be my pastor. You know what else they are? My brother. And my sister. Trust me, they didn't make it 40 years on a give me attitude. They made it 40 years getting a grit in their crawl and say if nobody else does it, I'm going to do it. If nobody prays, I'm going to pray. If nobody fasts, I'm going to fast. If nobody will sing, I'm going to sing. If nobody know it, you just watch out. I'll get up and back out and do it. God forbid that it is the ministry the only ones produce some fruit. Because <laughs> the fact of the matter is, he wouldn't be a pastor if there wasn't a people to pastor. You make up the church. You make up the body of Christ. God planted you here just like he planted them here. So why are we growing? Why are our roots getting a grip? Why? Well, how come we don't get ourselves under the load? We expect somebody else to do all the praying. We expect everybody else to get in the hole. We expect somebody else to run the aisle. We expect somebody else to shout. We expect somebody else to speak in tongues. We expect somebody else to jump and hoop and holler and get drunk in the Holy Ghost. We expect somebody else to get the blessing. But you don't get what we're supposed to do. I'm sorry. If you don't produce any fruit, then the Lord didn't plant you. Where did our burden go? Where did the desire go? You know my cool Some of us are backslidden in heart out of boredom. We're bored. We're bored with reading. We're bored with praying. We're bored with fasting. We're bored with church. So now it's nothing more. Just I just show up so I don't hurt nobody's feelings and I don't get nobody upset with me. And I, I that way everything stands clear. And I just come and I clap my hands and I sing along with the sound of joy and everything be okay. You worship him with your lips. I'm not saying to everybody in this house. I hope it's a minority I'm preaching to. But I feel the spirit of laziness in here. Now I'm not throwing stones at nobody, but we're spiritually lazy. I feel lethargy. Procrastination. We'll get to it later. We'll do something for God later. We'll do it tomorrow. We'll do it next week. Maybe the next service. I'll pray. Maybe no, 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 no. Where's the fruit? Where's the fruit at? Kulava shalabu Where's that weight? Because a fruit that is produced by the wheat creates a weight that causes that wheat to bow. It causes it to bow. Heavy with grain. It's 
hard to be a stuck up when you're loaded with grain. You're loaded with fruit. I'm going to tell you what I feel in the Holy Ghost and I'm taking my seat. But some of you better get your prayer life back like you used to have it. Some of you need to get that fire for God like you used to have that fire for God. Some of you need to get that zeal and that desire that you once had. You need to divorce yourself from things of this world. Divorce yourself from your preference. Divorce yourself from the things that's got you so wrapped up that you can't pray. So wrapped up that you can't fast. So wrapped up that church isn't really all that important to you anymore. Hey, 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 hey. So wrapped up where church is just a place you go to and not a person that you are. Some of you, some of you under the sound of my voice. You are just a little situation away from flying the coop, from backsliding, from losing everything you have with God. That doesn't reflect the sower, that doesn't reflect the seed, that reflects your ground. Come on, you need to tear up the fallow ground and receive the word of the Lord tonight. You need to receive the word of the Lord. You need to receive it. Come on. There ought to be, you ought to be so rooted that you ought to be able to say it doesn't matter who lies on me. I'm not leaving the house of God. It doesn't matter who uh, put or spreads all kinds of rumors or who hurts my feelings. I'm not leaving the house of God. This is the house of bread. This is where God planted me. I'll pray for my brother. I won't leave my brother. I'll pray for those that try to mock me and cause me to stumble. And God will heat cold the fire upon their head. But I'm going to pay attention to me. Let them play whatever happened uh, all around me uh, but I'm going to watch for me uh, because i got to stay planted uh, i got to stay rooted uh, come on raise your hands under the power of the Holy Ghost raise your hands and glorify God right now raise your hands and praise him prayer changes things yes prayer changes things prayer will bring you through the valley Prayer will bring you out of the wilderness. Prayer, praying, will bring you out of sin. You've heard the word of God tonight. And I'm going to believe somebody here needs to come and pray. I really do. And if you will just raise up out of that seat right now and come to this altar, we will pray with you. You need a touch from God. You need a touch from up on high. Church, we give you an opportunity. We can't make you pray. We can't pull you to the altar. God will save you. But if you'll come and rise up on your own feet and walk down this song, let us pray with you. My heart's desire is to see the Lord saved. My heart's desire is to see those that want to teach and preach and to seek the face of God. You need to know the word of God before you try to teach someone else. Hear what I was saying tonight. And if God calls you, he'll give you the tools to do the job with. Somebody here tonight needs to pray. Somebody needs to come. You might say, Pastor, I've been a prayer. You cannot pray to us. Somebody needs to come. Raise up on the sea right now. Come down this hour. And let us pray with you. Come. Come. You need to pray. You need to cry out. 